Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play on my channel. On the screen right now, you will see a timestamp. Now that timestamp will give you all the key information you need for this episode. If you want to jump to a certain point, whether it's a battle or something on the campaign, you can go straight to that timestamp and you'll skip obviously my intro. But for those of you that want to stick around, here we are going to say this intro, then by all means stick around. So we're playing as Alariel the Radiant. She is a brand new... Legendary Lord for the High Elves. I'm not going to read all the High Elf stuff, but here it's all there for you guys to read on the screen. The initial challenge is hard. We're going to play on hard campaign and hard battle difficulty. Now, she gains bonuses when all of Ulthuan is held by the High Elves. Amazing, very good. Receives penalties when in regions when regions within Ulthuan are not held by High Elves. Okay, we've got to sort that out straight away then. Hero capacity is plus two for handmaidens. Right costs minus 75% for the invocation of Isha. Lord effects. Alariel leaves lingering bonuses on regions she visits. Alariel weakens as chaos grows stronger, so we've got to try and get that chaos influence to a minimum. Missile damage plus 15% for Sisters of Avalon and the Handmaiden units. Now, she does have quite a lot of Wood Elf units. She does have the Treekin. Monstrous infantry starts off with. Very good units to have at the start of a campaign and also. Of course, the Sisters of Avalon, which we'll show you probably in this first episode. Before I actually click start, I want to say a massive thank you to Creative Assembly and the Total War team for giving me early access to this DLC. Hopefully, I can show you guys some of the stuff from this campaign. If there's anything you want me to show you specifically, then let me know in the comment section below, guys, and I will show you in the next episode. Okay, guys, let's crack on with it. Isha cries. Her tears stain the world. Peace evades us, and I will not stand idle. The Ever Queen strides beyond Avalon's borders. Cain's servants threaten the very nature of my realm, having seized the Phoenix Gate. News reaches me of further murderous fleets setting voyage across the great ocean, inspired by the Queen of Hageneth. Others look to harm the Asur while the Vortex remains unstable. Across the chill waters, followers of Chaos spread their corruption, planting a seed of pure evil into my weakening heart. But great strength can be found in mysterious places. Great power resides within the Shrine of Cain, one that can twist the mind of its master but also slay those who stand in his way. The time to make our stand is now, sisters. Isha is with us, for I am the mother and the protector of Althwan. Okay, here we go. So that was the little intro there. So, Avalon, defender of Althwan, protecting the realms of Althwan from its enemies is paramount to Avalon. Both the inner and outer realms bestow powerful benefits if held by the High Elves, but also weaken your resolve through negative effects if they fall into others' hands. Mortal Worlds Torment As chaos seeps into the world, Alariel's strength and power weakens upon the battlefield. Only reducing and ultimately ridding the world of these armies of chaos will allow Alariel to regain her former strength. And then Power of Nature um, his power is that of itself, as her court passes from region to region, she brings great joy and reward to those who stand beside her, boosting their public order and reducing the corruption that they face for a period of time. And obviously the Sword of Cain, as is the case with the other campaigns I'm doing, it's a very good sword. We won't try and get it if we can. Okay, mission issued. Rally field. No problem at all. Also, quest for here. Queen of Ulthuan, or mission rather than quest. Caption. Capture and occupy settlement belongs to the following faction, the Scourge of Cain. Not a problem at all. We start off here at uh, Gay and Vale. We're at war with Scourge of Cain, and they actually have quite a bit of land. They have Evershale, Tor, Saroy, Phoenix Gate, and then down here, Tor and Fleck as well. And also Tor Dreniel. They have five settlements to begin with. They're actually quite a strong uh, faction. And we want to get to the Scourge of Cain right here, the Shrine, so we'll probably work our way in that direction. We're right by the Vortex as well here, so we're going to just go through the Vortex here with my camera. 
There's actually some gold by here as well, some skulleries we can loot on the way. Hand got my Maiden handmaiden by here. Wound. Now if you've got a name for my handmaiden, then by all means let me know in the comment section. Just leave a comment, let me know what you want me to name this last by here, and I will rename her in a future episode. Alaria so Lariel, she has her dryads, some spearmen, sisters of Avalon, Elerian, Reavers, and Trekin. I'm going to stick the handmaiden into her Ever army. Queen's chosen. I stand and what we're going to do, you. as has been the case Beach's in the first chosen. episodes of each series I've done with this DLC, I'm going to just jump in straight away with the battle, Send my start maidens. things off, rack up some banners straight away. So we've got the Horn of Isha, that's reload skill, a melee attack. With the reload, probably want to give it to Sisters of Avalon, especially if they get attacked. Although they do have pretty decent stats. They can hold up their own against a lot of units anyway, if they were caught up in melee, probably. Banner of Avalon, improved power, recharge rate. I'm going to put that on her, and let's fight Sound battle. It's only against five units, but it's a chance to sort of show you a little bit of what she has. Obviously, she does have a couple of tree units. She's a bit like a... I guess you could say she's like a hybrid high elf slash wood elf kind of... Of build, but strange. I think by the law she doesn't have too much to do with the Wood Elves, um, but they've given her quite a lot of Wood Elf units in this in this game. So interesting how they've how they've done it. So I think what we will do, we'll just grab everybody and get them out of the way for the moment. I'm gonna gamble, see if we can get some more. Lovely looking battlefield, by the way. Here, play. Okay, we didn't go up at all. Whatever. Right, let's get Alariel and the Handmaiden. Let's put them at the top. Spearmen are going to be sort of behind them, like so. Sisters of Avalon have got very good range. They're just going to pop them behind for now. They can get to shoot in front. I'm thinking I got Illyrian Reavers, Cav. I'm just going to put them out on the left flank for now. I'll keep my three units together. Oh, shit, what have I done? Oh, look at me. I can't do anything at all. Right, let's put them like that. Cavalry there. Got the tree units. That'll do. That'll be fine. I can reform afterwards. I'll reform them now, actually. Bring the spearmen up. Bring the two lords up. Bring the trees up. And then if I can bring my cavalry, let's go up to that sort of bush up there for now. So, what we're going to do, cavalry's going to go in this bush by here. We're going to go in that direction and attack them. And my trees are going to then go around to the right flank, like so. Let's have a look at Alariel. Greatly improved power recharge rate. She's got some abilities here. Sure. Armor and melee defense. And I can replenish. So she's a healer, basically. Handmaiden is a hybrid weapon specialist. So she can shoot. So you can get some hits on the Dread Spears for me to begin with. As a matter of fact, I want you to hit the Lord. You're shooting the Dread Spears. We have Alariel in hand to hand combat. It's okay, 47, 67. She's better than what they've got there, so should be okay. I'm actually going to put her against the Greek Swords. I think my Treekin and my Dryads can team up here. And now, a bit late with the Cavalry Charge, but I can go straight through and charge two of these with my Cavalry. Switch targets to the Dark Shards that are exposed there. Right, Spears can get involved. Keep shooting those dark shards for me. Should win this quite easily. Let's just uh, zoom in and actually watch this battle unfold as we get our cavalry fly right in right now. Chasing off the enemy here. Into the back of side of them. Here they go. Lovely little charge. Straight to the back of them. Nice. And this one's broken as well by here. You can actually see Alariel's actually losing by here. So she's not really. She's a wizard. You don't want to use her in combat like this. We can obviously replenish though, which is what we're going to do. That's the beauty of having a wizard like this. We can start improving some of our hit points. They're starting to creep up now. And I can also use this as well to give her a bit of armor and a bit more protection as well. Three units doing relatively well against their lord. Completely wrecking their lord, actually. Not, not a lord, just general. You know what I mean. 
Go and turn my archers around because I don't want the friendly fire. Do you stay for Avalon? I don't think I need to. I'm going to use my replacement again though, Earthblood. Just pull out. It's a really useful thing to have. We're obviously going to want to try and get a lot of good spells with her though, at the moment. She is a little bit weak. You can't really throw her into combat like that. Obviously, with the other two lords with this DLC, you can do that easily, but with her, you've got to take a bit more care with her. I'm just showing you that, just to show, show you. Up against Bleak Swords and Dread Spears, and she was losing to them. But the good thing is, I can have a heal. I could send other units in, like Spears. Matter of fact, I'm probably worth getting my Treekin to come back around. And my cavalry. I think their archers have gone. Are they? Okay, leave the archers. They, they don't worry me so much. They've been weakened to, you know, like a quarter. So leave them. We're going to go for the rear charge instead. And again, I'm going to just do that now while the cavalry's in there. Try and heal her. I don't think I quite got the cavalry actually. But that little rear charge action's probably got them all hot and sweaty, routed. Obviously we have those archers, but they may go soon. We'll go back after them now. And there we go. Victory. Just like that. So we'll end battle. Just wanted to briefly show you what she can be like in battle. We lost 58. We could have lost a lot less. Uh, 92 kills for my Aryan Reavers. Only 13 and 7 for the two, the Handmaiden and her. But it's like I said, we need to try and buff her up with her spells. At the moment, she's quite precarious. She's quite, you know, she's Grace good at the healing. Isha. You're better off sticking her behind the lines at the moment and just get bringing her in to heal up and then only sending her in if necessary. Throw her in like I showed you then against those units. And the other two lords in this, in this faction pack, in this DLC pack, would have been fine, but with her, you got to take a bit more care. We did get something there, though. Stay for Avalon Unique, which is good. So that's lovely. Now we're going to occupy. Search quickly and leave. Isha is with got a thousand me. treasury, wave fragments, and mother, and protector for armor piercing damage. Mission's been issued to get the full province. That's not a problem at all. We we'll probably go for Torsero next, so I get the full province of Avalon. Oh, what's the vortex? But there. Right, let's start off by upgrading her. Alariel the Ever Queen. This is a skill tree. I'm going to go through this briefly now as well. So you can see all the stats. Well, I can't because my face is in the way, but uh, you saw the stats earlier. So Star of Avalon, that's what it does. It's on the screen for you guys to read. Good leadership, characters, aura. Cast your replenishment rate's good. Elven Steed, probably get a Steed for Lake. I don't think I go for the Elven Steed. I get a Barded um, Ithilmar Steed. I get a Great Eagle. I'm more inclined to get an Eagle. I might wait for a bit. Isha's Blessing. And ward of, uh, ward of Isha. Ward save and miscast chance. Touch of the Ever Queen. Weapon strength goes up. And then Chaos Bane. Which is really good. Plus four attack for the whole army when attacking Chaos, Norska and Beastmen. And a bonus against large as well. That's actually a very good one to get. Tradition dictates. So get public order, bonus, attacks. Leader of the court goes up. Servant of Isha. So for the handmaidens. Spiritual Defender, so untainted for the local province. Blood and Fire for the upkeep, cost, and campaign map movement. Beacon of Hope for leadership and melee defense. Gifts of Isha, Ward Save, Casio Placement, and then Guardian of the Land. The rest are pretty much your standard Root Marcher, Aura, and sort of uh, abilities and stuff here. We're probably going to go down the Earth Bloods thing initially. I want to get some good stats here. Fars Protection. Give for armor and melee defense bonuses. Life bloom for some of the replenishment as well. Shields of thorn. Um, it's good against um, weapon damage and missile resistance stuff there. So some stuff we can get there. And then if we go to the later part of this tree then. Arcane conduit for your power reserve. Banishment then. Going to be quite good. Strong as multiple units. Good against the armor, huge randomly moving area of effect and can disrupt formations as well. So it's actually a pretty useful one to get. Arcane and Forging as well looks quite tasty. That's good against a single combat or single unit rather than a multiple units. Exorcism then for a leadership debuff. And then Tempest as well then. Which is good against flying, which is actually quite useful. Especially up against like dragons and eagles and that sort of thing. Got your rally then, so you've got immovable force. These are all for the armies, these are rally. Um, Silver Torrent, and then you've got Heart of the Flame, 
sand your ground then for your melee defense and leadership and then the last one then want we'll to try and get lightning strike later in the campaign quarter mass is good for the upkeep cost and then you go along and you get uh, renowned and loved so that's her sort of stats as well her bonuses and whatnot go back in i forgot to upgrade her i'm just going to give her the aura for now i think that's fine so evershale does have a hamlet although i'm gonna have to upgrade that when i get a population surplus which will take a few turns i also have a dock so i'm getting a bit of growth and in income as well from that i can upgrade this to get myself some archers lothan sea guard i quite like the sound of that we'll get that straight away i could get world root entrance dormant which gives me dryads dryads are quite good as far as the creature infantry goes, they got 7,000 hit points. They are damage dealers. The thing is, they are weak against armor, but they could be a useful unit to get early on. If I want to go for some resources, I could go for an exotic animal tamer. I could even go for grazing meadows to get more reavers, but I think I'm okay with the one for now. I could go for elven gardens, which will give me a noble. So I could go for a noble early on as well, which replenishes troops and increases trade. But as I've got a handmaiden already, I'm reluctant to go for that. I'd rather go for the the dryads to give myself a bit more in combat so let's give ourselves more archers that's one thing we are a bit low on right now we'll end the turn there get through our first end of turn phase there we go just as we get to the end we'll go for Tor Soroy I think that's how it's pronounced make a march over there and then Quest issue. Okay, capture and occupy the following settlement, Phoenix Gate. We are going to do that, obviously. We get a shield sort of Isha for getting that, so that's going to be worth it. Get you Welcome. up to the border. The I want to take Tar Sarai first, then before going to the Phoenix Gate. And what we'll do, we will recruit the two more archers, one more spear. Once they've been recruited, we'll go for Tar Sarai and circle back on ourselves and go down there. But we will do that in a future episode. So guys, I want to once again say thank you to Creative Assembly for giving me early access. This is the third first part now that would have gone up on the channel. I've done the first two this morning. I recorded them. I've recorded this one this afternoon. So they all should be up by the time you're watching this one. Let me know in the comment section on those videos which campaign you find the most interesting, which faction you find the most interesting and, and load, and which one you'd like to see me keep a series on because I'm only going to be doing about three, four, maybe five episodes per faction, probably for, for the, all of the week up until release. And then once the game, once the DLC has been released, I will then um, drop the other two. So you've had a bit of a feel for them, and I'll keep one going. So let me know in the comment section which one you want to see me keep, and I'll take it from you guys. I've been Dragonheart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and all my sponsors on YouTube Gaming. They're currently on the screen right now. For more information, check out all the links in my description and check out the links on the screen as well.